Hello, hello, everyone. Oh my gosh, I think we're back. Is this thing on? I think so. Uh, I think it's on. Oh my yeah. gosh. Hello. Welcome, everyone, back to the live stream recording of the Engadget podcast. It's been a long time since we've done this. I'll first introduce who we've got with us today. I am Sherlyn Lowe, Deputy Editor at Engadget. My co-host of the podcast, Devendra Hardwar, Senior Editor. Hey, Dev. Hello. Our podcast producer, Ben Alman. Hey. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And to celebrate this momentous occasion with us, and also here to chat about our topic of the week, we've got special guests. Let's start with the less important person, <laughs> Julian Jogatu and Wire. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, you're equally you're important. You're just when your Fowler <laughs> accounts, basically, or your YouTube numbers. <laughs> uh, the only slightly more important than Julian person, Michael Fisher, also our guest today. Hi, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm caught off guard. I, I genuinely thought you were setting me up for a fall there. Hi, thanks. <laughs> hello, hello. And also, Julian podcast producer Ben important. Elman is here. Oh, we're all well, we're all around. Yeah, no, we're I all was here. introduced already. We're yeah. good. Um, but hey, uh, welcome back. And for those of you who are new, uh, who might not understand what's going on, this is a live stream version of the recording of the Engadget podcast. We're just going to shoot the crap. Um, here, we're also going to be recording an audio version of the podcast that's a bit more polished. It goes up on podcast platforms like iTunes, Spotify, what have you. Um, but because we are recording an actual show and this is the behind the scenes raw look, we might make flubs, we might stop uh, and retake lines. And then uh, as we are actually recording those segments, we won't be able to talk to you during the chat uh, uh, because it would sound really off for the audio <laughs> listeners, but we will be taking segment breaks during which we will have question and answers directly with the audience. And speaking of, oh my goodness, People seen all your here. names. It's, hello, it's hello great. to all the people. I think the very first person to say hi to us today was George Morgan. So hello, uh, Jiming Chong is back, Ruin Dick, Declan. We got football DE60. We've got the Engadget account. Hi. Uh, <laughs> also, Mark <laughs> Dell. Uh, Matthias Sequeira says the pin is just stupid. We will be getting into that very shortly. And yeah. And actually, like, we've had a lot of ado getting our technical stuff all figured out. So let's get to it. Let's so, go. yeah. Let's count down from three. People. Uh, who, oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really quickly wanted to point out also that, like Ben said, we did have a lot of technical issues, and also we are. This is the first time coming back. We will have technical yeah. issues. Bear I, with I would us. say please shout out. Please shout out if you know and anything weird yes. with the stream because the stream is coming through my computer and we had a whole YouTube fun time like authenticating back into the stream, which is why we were delayed. But yeah. Yeah. And kudos. Loads of kudos to Dev especially, but also Ben for doing a lot of the behind the scenes live. We had Julio Barrientos join us briefly to help us get on live as well. Thanks to everyone on the team for the help and work, but patience, please, dear audience. Um, but yes, let's do the sync, Ben. Okay, yeah, so uh, just making sure everybody on the stream is still recording. You got Let your local check. recordings local going. Recording. I do Confirmed. hear the motor from a phone, so put that somebody somewhere not else. Not on your table? Yes. Yeah, not on your table. The, uh, try the, to silence the, it. There, nobody, can. there are yep. 17 in here, and I'm tethered to this thing with a wire, so <laughs> I mean, it might happen. Sorry. He is Mr. Mobile, <laughs> He is Mr. Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've got that website open. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so... Um, I'm just going to count down from three because that's sure. the thing that makes the most sense. So, it might right. be me. I have very loud fans. Sorry, guys. It's so, not fan noise, yeah. People who have uh, watched the live stream before know what's happening. If you are new, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to count down from three. Then we're all going to clap or snap our fingers on the stream. You can clap in the chat if you want to. And then we're going to do like five or ten seconds of silence. Room tone really helps. It, it helps me edit the audio version of this. And then we're going to get into the stream. So counting down from three, two, one and some silence i'll let you know when the silence is over
All right, silence over. Let's get into actually talking about the AI pin. So we like, love seeing ooh. all these claps in the chat, by we'll the way. The okay. And all the cats around uh, oh Michael is spraying his cat. Oh my God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody said they got <laughs> the poor clap. Cat. Relative spray. silence. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> 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 Banging into the table as well. Very helpful. All right. Yep. I'm ready to take the intro. Is everybody ready? Okay. Yes. Punch it. Okay. <laughs> Three, two. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Engadget podcast. I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe. I'm Senior Editor Devinder Hardwar. And this week, we are here to talk about the Humane AI pin now that all the reviews are up, but a really quick shout out that uh, for those of you who have been listening uh, and missing the live stream version of this podcast recording, we are back today. Uh, you can always go back to the Engadget YouTube channel to watch a replay if you wish. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue doing this every week at about 10.30 a.m. Eastern. So just keep an eye out. On uh, Thursday, we are stuff yeah. Yeah, on Thursday mornings. Uh, yes, and so we are soft relaunching the live stream. Yeah. Yay! Thanks a lot to Devendra for all that hard work uh, in the background. But anyway, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yes, this episode we are we have a lot of special uh, guests to. I'll take that line again, Ben. This episode we have a lot of special guests uh, joining us for this momentous occasion, and I will uh, bring them on and introduce them in a little bit. So as always, if you're enjoying the show, please make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, leave us a review on iTunes, uh, and yeah, send us your emails, podcast at Engadget.com. All right, we ready? Yes. Good to go. Okay. <clears throat> so, so today, Thursday morning, 11... No, 8 a.m. Eastern, <laughs> our reviews went up uh, on Engadget.com. My 5,150-word review is up, and we have a 10-ish minute long review video as well. Elsewhere on the internet, we saw reviews go up on Mr. Mobile's YouTube channel, Wired, and a lot of other publications. Uh, and speaking of, we've got two guests joining us today, Julian Chikatsu over at Wired. Hello, Julian. Hello, and thank you for having me. And drum roll, please, for the very uh, flippy boy, but this time snappy boy, boy? Uh, <laughs> YouTuber extraordinaire, wearable tester of, of, of all time. I don't even, whatever. Mr. Mobile himself, Michael Fisher. Hey, Fisher, I think, what's up? I think, it, I think it will be very easy to live up to that intro, Sherlyn. Thank you very much. It's uh, really, yeah. I'm just happy to be here. Very measured. <laughs> Great to be here. Thanks very for Very measured this time. Um, yes. Yeah, so, okay. So all our reviews are up. We, we spent some time, uh, talking together behind the scenes before the embargo lifted. So we have a lot of thoughts. I know where three of us and, De and Ben and Dev are both very excited, uh, to hear our thoughts. But before we get into that, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what the humane AI pin is. And I also want to just say that we're going to have to try to like rein this conversation in a bit. I mean, we also already acknowledge that like, there's, there's a lot we want to say. I don't know that we'll have necessarily enough time to get through all of it. So I'm going to try to follow a general structure of like certain elements and then we'll go ham in each of those sections, right? So first of all, let's let's have um, Fisher, you start taking a stab at describing this thing for us. What is what is the humane AI pin? <laughs> well, I wasn't prepared for this. But the humane AI pin actually uh, is, is rather easy to describe. It is if you imagine a phone that you shrank to 15% of its total volume, and made a wearable, essentially like a kind of slightly oversized Apple Watch Ultra, um, and removed the screen and replaced the screen with a digital projector that uh, gives you an interface on your skin, um, mm. and then put a hard limit on how much time you could use the laser. So uh, it, it really interact predominantly with your voice and replace the operating system you know and love with a, a, an LLM powered one uh, and, and, and throw in a lot of version 1.0 problems on top of that. Uh, what you have is the catnip for a gadget reviewer who doesn't want to review yet another phone, but probably something that not a lot of people should buy, if anyone. That, that was a lot of words, um, Fisher. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. I'm yeah, gonna mix it down. Yeah, the, yeah, just, yeah I'm going to throw the same question to you're, Julian. You're like, what editor. would you describe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us need editors. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to Julian. Can you describe it in five words? <laughs> five words? Because um... uh, Fisher took all your words. I'm you know sorry. what's nice, Sherlyn, is that you gave me ample time to prepare my answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Nice. And then Julian gets seconds to do five words. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is a pin that can't do five words. Anyway, um, <laughs> pin, yes. it, it's 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 basically a glorified chat GPT on your body. Um, yeah. And in the same way that chat GPT and things like Gemini can get stuff really amazingly correct and give you so much, so much cool information. It can also make up stuff and give you completely incorrect information. So yeah. that is one of the main takeaways of this thing is that you can't quite trust it and it sits on your body, which is a great <laughs> recipe for a product. I mean, I've got a few words for this thing, yes, like just please. from looking at the hype cycle and hearing about you guys testing it. The few words is it's a hot damn mess. That's what it is. That's all it is. I can't disagree. Normally, I think Devendra, you and I, I, I disagree about a lot of a lot of <laughs> bleeding edge stuff. But that I life. cannot say you're yeah. wrong. I can't say you're wrong about any of that. I I do want to point out um, that the company Humane Inc. Its main developer or its co-founders are Bethany Bongiorno and Imran Chowdhury, who were managers at Apple before, and uh, I believe OpenAI's founder or CEO Sam Altman uh, also has a stake in Humane Inc. Yeah. Uh, and the AI pin that we all reviewed over the past 10-ish days uh, is likely their first product. It's announced as their first product. So it's like possible mm -hmm. that there's other things coming from the company. But this is like the first manifestation of anything we've ever seen from them. Um, let's talk initial uh, impressions and expectations to begin with. I... I was mad hype. I was like, whoa, this thing looks so good. In your video, uh, Fisher, you mentioned that the hardware is really good. And I really wanted to point out in my review that the hardware is so clean. It's so well thought out. But there, I mean, I never got enough words. To, like, I'm already at 5,000 words. I couldn't, like, spend another paragraph talking about how actually there are some really thoughtful touches. The, the cradle is weighted. The charging cradle is weighted. There's, like, you know, it's a lot exquisite. of uh, seamless. Yeah, the design is yeah. really clean. Um down I know you. I've already heard the wire. Like, I mean, they 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 right, they, exactly. they, they, they made the, the it feel like a shoelace because of that. Like the parallel to wearables, and they like change yeah. the radius on the wall charger at the last minute. Like, it's just it's it's exquisite hardware. I mean, when you unbox yeah. it, you you really feel like you're getting a a, a deluxe level experience from space because it does look like it landed from space. The, space the charger, the charging case is like the space egg. It's yeah. like a. It's like that Men in Black movie where they had to send the lady back to space. I forget the uh, which one it was. Two send maybe. The lady Men back in Black. To space. Maybe one. that was Zark. 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 No? That may be two with oh, the bad lady. lady. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to say, you guys were talking so much about the design, Trillin. You're saying the design stuff is good. The thing that struck me about this is it seems like a movie prop. Like it seemed like yeah. a movie prop that they were mm -hmm. selling. The TED talk where uh, the CEO was like showing it off it felt like a movie demonstration but the yes. sort of thing where you watch a movie like demolition man or something and like oh that's why are there three seashells i don't know um you, you stop thinking about it five seconds later right <laughs> whereas this we have to live with it and you have to think think about it and yeah to, nothing about it seems good unfortunately Despite julian did you i mean were you as taken by the hardware or were you like your first reaction was something else I think for me, it was just like, I I thought it looked great. Like it looked great. And and especially when I saw the accessories, I thought it was, you know, really well polished and had that Apple-like quality to them. But in my briefing, we spent maybe 60 or 70% of the time on the accessories. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in their initial launch video, they also spent, like they launched immediately into the colors yep. of the accessories of the product. And yeah, that was right. a bit of a red flag for me because <laughs> I don't know what this thing does yet. I'm still waiting to find out what this thing is about to do. And now we're first talking about the accessory system, the colors and everything. Yeah. And I, I found that a little weird because, you know, I think most people would initially want to know what is this thing going to do for me? Uh, yeah. And that, that initially sort of tipped me off that like, maybe this is not going to be that great. And, Did the company yeah. answer questions? Like you guys all talk oh, yeah. with them. And I yes. feel like this is a situation where I love to be that annoying you know, person at the front of the class during a briefing. Like if I see blood, I'm like, oh, really? You, what is this? You're saying you're yeah. promising all this stuff. Like I, I tend to like go for it. Has it, did you, were you guys asking? So I tend to, um, I, we're going to get into all the things it does <laughs> wrong. And I, I, I will say that my experience in person with them was, was really quite um, refreshing because we know how humane kind of hit the scene with this kind of opaque Ted talk. And then this really, really vaguely off-putting launch video. And I found Imran and Bethany in that to be 
you know, very, very inaccessible and, and very robotic. And so I was surprised when I met them to be like, oh, right. These are these are humans. They're also humans yeah. who happen to, happen to be married. Uh, and they're they're almost and this is not relevant to anybody but me, perhaps. But I, I found it almost like cute because they still work very well together and they finish each other's sentences. And then I, you do. I, they're I, so I cute. saw the real people behind them. So that was refreshing I, to me. And they're enthusiastic and they're, they're, they're excited about the, yeah. about the product there. Then they were willing to answer any, almost any questions that I, yeah. that I, put. Yeah. so uh, not that since was Theranos, very nice well. guys. Have we seen a successful power couple in tech, right? <laughs> and it all, um, everything worked out well there. Sure I really did. like, <laughs> Uh, Bethany Bongiorno, by the way, I think she had a very good, like, even in the follow-ups when we were encountering problems and we followed up and we're like, why, like this thing runs hot and we'll get into all of that very quick. I want us to get into that like soon. Yeah. Um, they were like, oh, we realized and we're sorry that that was your experience. Like this is, they accepted some, they took some accountability and some of the responses and they did say that they're working to address the issues that we came up with. Like, so I want to like caveat all of this that like, as, as we are about to go ham, on this thing, note that there are humans behind this company and they seem to be making an effort. Uh, and I think it was a very ambitious thing they took on. So uh, so speaking agreed. of ambition, for me, I was most excited to try out that projector. This is the most unique thing. I never saw anything like that before the Humane AI pin. Julian, what was your experience like? Because I think you might have the largest hands on this group. Can you tell me a little bit about why that might be relevant? Well, no. so yeah, you got to put your palm up in front of the device after you tap it, and then it projects the display. This is the only display available on it. It projects that onto yep. your palm. And so obviously, the bigger the, the surface area, the the better for you. I did compare it with Sherlin's, and Sherlin's hand is nowhere near as big as mine. Is. I was like, how do you actually see anything on that? How, is, how does Sherlin lift things or pick things up? Um, by the way, by the way, putting your only display on your hand, a thing that it's always free and never obstructed by things in daily life, brilliant. Brilliant to see. Sure, never, yeah, we Love never it. have to use that thing. So go never on, Julian, sorry. I did notice, and I don't know if this says something about my lack of going to the gym, but my your arm starts to get a little tired after you kind of hold yes. it up and you're trying to scroll through texts or something. Fisher? Sure? Sherlyn uh, definitely built that objection into her video very, very smartly. Uh, I, I can tell you've done reviews for a long time because that's the first thing that a product defender will show up in the comments to say, like, you just need to work out more. It's not too heavy. And Sherlyn's like, yeah. no, I go to the gym all the time. No, look, I, I, I think here's the thing. Um, I like that the laser projector seems to hail from the future. It is certainly mm. my favorite thing to use. It was my favorite scene to shoot for my video was to go into my bathroom after oh, the hot shower a, had yeah. been running for 10 minutes to get a us cool a steam visual. bath so you could see the beams. Um, but, you know, obviously that is not what they're trying to do. And I, I'll say one last nice thing before we talk about the performance. I think adding a laser projector that has an inherent time limit because of thermals, mm -hmm. um, you know what? If you're going to put it on any product, put it on this one because <laughs> they their whole mission is to is to take people off their screens, which is yeah. a very kind yeah. of 2018. We're getting too digitally intoxicated kind of yeah. take. You, you know what? The laser should just slightly it. it should just slightly burn you. You know, like in the long run, yeah, right. it, it, it should the hurt long, to use. It should yes. hurt to use. It should like leave an imprint on your hand. I think that would make. But sense. before, <laughs> let's let's uh circle back a little bit, Fisher. When you said that, like, if you're going to, you know, talk, use a projector that has like a limit because of its ter thermal limitation, can you kind of explain what that is and why that is? Yeah, so, I, well, why is speculation, but I think we're all kind of aligned on on why. This is a very small device. It has a lot packed into it. The engineers I talked to at MWC said the hardest part about building it was the miniaturization. They had to shape corners mm -hmm. off components. So the laser, um, these are not common, to your point, Sherlyn. We don't see them a lot. There's not an mm -hmm. industry making mobile-friendly projectors. So it uses a lot of power. It kicks out a lot of heat. The device already makes a lot of heat for all the other reasons a tiny phone would. So after mm -hmm. about six to nine minutes of using that laser, you get your AI pin needs to cool down. And then it yep. turns off the projector, and you're very sad <laughs> because you can't really use anything else on <laughs> the device. But again, you're supposed to use voice to interact with it predominantly, which is great because it's AI powered. And so that works perfectly too. Um, Mark Dell in our chat is asking, <laughs> have any smartwatches ever had projectors? And Rob Langley says, whole different meaning to burn in, which let's just look mm. at that, right? Burn, being burned uh, <laughs> for me was something I referred to a lot in my video and, and Fisher, you called me out on this a bunch. I think I was just so, I guess, scarred by the first, the couple times that I did get, you know, 
burn and and the word burn to uh i couldn't find a different word for it i didn't mean that like i i had a scar you know i left a mark in my skin fizzled. It, it, but it ran hot and hot it's enough that when i accidentally brushed brush past it um it would be like a shock a huge shock but mm. i also have more heat sensitive than most so i want to say that this wasn't like a third second or first degree burn but that it was definitely like a shocking feeling um but that's it we all felt this thing run hot Right, like Julian, did you have that experience? Because I know Fisher and I stop. did. Um, you stop. <laughs> Sorry. His AI pin just started talking because it didn't like what we were saying about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it was like, no, thank you, um, Julian. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I touched your like the, your human yeah. AI unit, and that was unnaturally hot, and I was like, holy crap, <laughs> that, that feels really yeah. hot. Mine had, I ran into the same sort of cool, you know, your AFP needs to cool down a couple times, and it also gets really warm, but I also, like, you know, taking aside the general, this thing overheats fairly often if you use it too much, even when it's not in use, the rear battery has this, like, lukewarm Yep. Like emanating from the back yes. yep. so i always feel this general warmth over here and then, yep. then makes me think about the product that it's there and you can feel a little bit of the weight there too um, yeah. which isn't bad but i just recall the other day when it was finally 75 degrees i was like huh my body over here feels a little postier <laughs> yeah. than the other parts of right, my right above your heart uh yeah. no potential issues there also strikes me like Sherlyn, if you're saying it's surprising you like when you touch it sometimes imagine like hugging somebody imagining like mm. working like having a child grab onto you yeah. and just being a little burned like a little singed by this thing yeah. that is right in front of you that sucks. this is not like, I don't know, how would you carry a child while this thing is on? Because it's just a little magnet that's There's, It clothes. also, it definitely gets in the way uh, with a lot of things. And mm -hmm. uh, I I will first credit them that, like, the, the, the mechanism works well. The magnets are very strong. They clamp on. And for the most part, if you've, like, attached sure. it not in the, like, on top of your heart, you don't really feel it. Um, I did feel what Julian is talking about, where, like, it just, when I'm sitting down, especially, like, it leans against my chest and it runs very warm. Um but uh, that's kind of where all the good things end, which is like the magnets work. <laughs> cool. Uh, they offer you some accessories. Cool. Uh, everything else is kind of cumbersome. Like, but you put it in the middle or on your front, right? Then you wear like a bag with a strap that's a crossbody. Gone. You're like, it's in the way. You put it on a jacket and you take the jacket off. You have to change it into your other shirt. Um, if you... Sorry, do you want to pause a little bit to address the fact that Fisher... No, 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 keep going. Keep, keep going. Goddamn keep going. cat toys. I'll be right back. Cat toys, yeah. Oh, there's noise. Okay. I heard it, yeah. I'll take it from if, if you, okay. And if you, if, if it's like in the springtime, like it is now in New York, you're just doing that over and over again. And every time, by the way, that you like remove the rear back or the battery from the Humane AI pin... It, you need to unlock it again unless you disable the setting, which you shouldn't because it's better for security to have it on. So, But the thing is, every time you move it or you <laughs> just, I don't know. Anyway, every time you do, you have to re-enter the pin. And do you know how you're supposed to do the pin thing? How? Okay, you guys, I'm going to do like a live demo because... Uh, for the live stream, please, but also you please. can probably hear on the like audio version of this podcast. Yeah, but if so it I'm makes gonna... noise, yeah, put it up. Oh, hang on. I'm going to... So what you hear is what I just removed the um, battery booster from my AI pin. And it, it made that little sound. So now it's going to snap. Okay. So bing, bong, bong, bing. Okay. Those are all like cute little noises, right? Okay. Now I'm going to try to unlock it. Sherlyn is waving her hand <laughs> in front of her face. That happens so often where the projector just doesn't show up sometimes. Like... And then you're stuck doing this weird, you're supposed stupid, to like, like hand thing in front the, of your face. Yeah, for I'm gonna move minutes. it. Well, Hang it's on. it's uh, sure then you're diagonal, so you've, you've mentioned you can't, right, yeah. you don't have all the practice of putting on Star Trek badges from third grade, so yeah, you need a tutorial. You, you really have to like put it straight and then oh, there it is. Okay, see, all right, so now I don't know if y'all can see it, but I'm gonna enter my passcode. But basically, for those who are listening to the podcast, uh -huh, uh -huh. I am holding my hand closer to my chest. And then pulling it back and then pinching my fingers. To yeah, this is them. great. And I just unlocked my pin. So that's how long it took. 
Yay! Uh, I will say that they they are saying that they will launch an update where you can add your pin code through voice. Uh, yeah. That said, smart. Love to tell like, everybody my pin code. Yeah, just say that loud. But, but also, like speaking of adding this pin code, like if you walk outside and you readjust it, and it's broad daylight. You can't see the projector at all. There's just no exactly. visibility. So there's not really, you have to go find a shade <laughs> to be able to do I love, I love this product, guys. I love this product. One of the most embarrassing like, parts of the, of the yeah. In your video, Fisher, you were like literally out in the out and about. And then you had to like one hand covers the like <laughs> projector so it gets some shade. And then one other hand is doing that like password thing. Yeah. No, it's it, and it's it's deeply embarrassing when you're with somebody else and you're like, excuse me for one second, let me just go unlock my AI pin that I just had to move from a jacket to another that's, garment. Yeah, that's exactly what we all want is embarrassing I look technology. Like, yeah, yeah but, I look you know, like I'm a long sighted person reading a menu from back to front. Like just, mm -hmm. I just look so silly to me every time I'm using this thing. Sorry. I don't, like I don't know. I think you can get like what I got comfortable enough with the projector after like two or three days, which is a long, a long learning curve, just half the review mm -hmm. period. But I'm pretty comfortable with it now. I think the, the the issue is a lot of these things are things that they said to your earlier point. They're like, we've, we've brought them up and they're like, yeah, we, we've thought about that. It's going to be coming in 1.2 or 1.5. And it's like, mm -hmm. maybe we can come back to this at the end. I'm sure you wanted to talk about it, but like, I don't know why it was launched in this state. It didn't need I mean, to. It could have launched in mm -hmm. a much more complete state if it had been given four more months. And I don't yeah. know why they they. I don't I don't know if that's necessarily true, by the way, because all the problems you guys are talking about, like the the usage issues, the ability for it to like stay on to you properly, the heating stuff, like maybe they could fix some of that. But the, these seem like like design flaws. Like these aren't software update issues. These some of them are, but no, but there's hardware. no. But look, yeah. Devendra, the thing doesn't have an alarm clock. That is not. Yeah. A, it doesn't have a that timer. Like a those, those are not difficult things. And forgive me, mm -hmm. I, I know I sound like yeah. a, you know I don't build things, but uh, those don't <laughs> seem like difficult things to build it seems like those are the hallmarks of a thing that's like yeah. got got pushed out the door before it was planned to be i think and True. so i think there's a lot of this that could be you could do a verbal pen sure it's lame but you could do it you know i don't, I, 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 I don't want to like you know they fundamentally though the projector uh, and i said this in my review that like i don't usually make a claim on like this thing is not gonna is gonna tank no one's ever gonna use this but like i personally do not think the projector will ever be a viable <laughs> solution to interacting with a gadget for most people like sure. most yeah. mass consumers it and and the fact that they spent so much of their time developing this thing and putting effort in miniaturizing it and now in their reviewed package and documents, they said, oh, we'll have updates to reduce reliance on the projector. Like the the amount of time they spent on it does not seem to make any sense in terms of like the actual end up functionality mm -hmm, of this mm -hmm. thing. Can I ask a question on the back of that before we move on? Yep. Uh, what has been your reaction from regular people, guys? Because when I'm reviewing a product typically, and this is why I'm I still it, yeah. rather <laughs> bullish on foldables, because every time somebody sees a flip phone or a foldable in my hands, they're like, oh, yeah. cool, and it's 80% positive. It's like, aspirational. They're, 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 yeah, right. they're enamored. Yeah. With this thing, I don't think a single person, after I explained it, was like, oh, yeah, I'd like that. They were all like, yeah, I don't like, I don't think, no, I don't, don't mm -hmm. like, don't think so. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? I, I love showing yeah. my friends it and then they're like wow and like me they're all like wow wow and then and then for me my arm gets tired and I put it down like I can't show it to you anymore it's just tired <laughs> so <laughs> it's like how and also then it'll cool down and like it'll be like sorry needs to cool down because it's yeah. run for too long and it's draining battery and it's getting too hot so mm -hmm. a lot of things are in the way I really do want to reiterate this projector not idea is cool it's ambitious uh I like that it's there so that like and now we'll get to these other parts quickly. Um, when you take a photo with the onboard camera, it's nice to be able to like bring up your palm and see whether you did capture the two trees on the perimeter of your vision or, mm -hmm. you know, see a message instead of having it read out to you if it's very long or something. But each time you raise up to see text, you can see seven lines of text and about two words on each line. So you're going to hold up your arm for a very long time yeah. to see all the words. I mean, it's, um, like, it's like living with a terminal, like again, like a command line interface almost. Like yeah, that's what it feels and, like. And like going to, yeah. you know, Fisher's question, like there's also this apprehension that I feel when I wear it because I am my instant reaction is someone's going to negatively come at me and be like, are you recording me? Is that a yeah, body camera? Yeah, like, yeah, sure. and, yeah. and someone, you know, did ask that question. Yes. I, and I, my inst initial in, initial response was just like, no, no, it's just, it's it does AI have a camera. I'm, I'm not recording you right now. You know, I had to be defensive and, 
it's just uh, it wasn't it wasn't a nice it, it didn't feel good to be have to like be on the defensive all the time when someone's trying to just ponder about what this thing is this, this thing guys like i'm just saying this feels like one of those like people who only live in silicon valley right and only talk to their valley friends and like it is yeah. such a bubble device of like oh this is cool. yes much easier i don't have kids i don't have any of these other like externalities that can mess up this device but for my weird bubble of people maybe this could be cool um and we'll get millions of dollars in funding for that and we have you know institutional backing because we used to work at apple or something like nothing about this device seems like it's actually smart or interesting for actual people so the pitch here is that this thing would replace your phones what would it take for this thing to replace uh, your so phone? so they walk that back that pitch oh um, okay uh, and they and use uh, their on, own the, on the TED talk, they were talking uh -huh. about like, oh, this is the future of personal devices, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then in the subsequent interview with, I forget which publication, they walked it back. They said, it's not meant to replace smartphones. <laughs> and they can't because you know why? Because if you want to connect to Wi-Fi, <laughs> because if you want to connect to Wi-Fi uh -huh. oh, man. and you, 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 you have a com complicated password and your Wi-Fi is password protected, you do not want to use the speaker to dictate your your message, right? Not speaker, the microphone to dictate your password. So you will have to go to humane.center slash Wi-Fi, enter the network name, not look for it, enter it because you already know your network name. Oh, amazing. And enter the password and then generate a QR code for the uh, wipe the AI pin to scan and then you will be connected to Wi-Fi. Look. You need another device. You just need another device to do anything. No a device that works. You know, um, so anyway, I, I, yeah. I do really want to move the conversation on because there's a lot we want to talk about. And uh, we sort of started to talk about the camera um, and, you know, with with you feeling self-conscious, Julian, about it, like wearing sort of a body cam in public. I really wanted to use this camera to be like, yeah, you can take pictures anytime all the way very quickly because it's always on me. Right. Um, how long on average does it take for you all to capture a picture with the AI pin uh, Fisher? Time wise, um, I don't have a problem with time. I can capture an image very quickly. Really? For me? Okay, I'm just about to double tap the thing, okay? Oh, sorry, two fingers? Yeah, two fingers. Yeah, see, this is a problem. You got to use it. Mm. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> wow. That's how Wait. long it took. Well, like, okay, here's it my two tap. Three, okay. It takes three that seconds. Takes like three right? seconds. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so it takes like three pictures. I don't mm -hmm. honestly know why because. I mean, you can then look at all three pictures mm -hmm. and I guess choose which one because the it best. knows it's not going to get the right shot because it Basically. takes a while. Well, uh, and 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 that's I think that's a, that's a bigger complaint that I have than speed is like is framing for sure. Like when you you guys, I'm sure when you're looking through your your photo libraries from the thing, uh, there's a lot of diagonal stuff. There's a lot of off center stuff. Like there's a lot of people not in the frame. Yep. If it is after, if it is, for example, at my birthday and it is after dark. Uh, you can't identify those, anyone in the shots. You guys, when you sent me those so photos bad. from your parents, I was like, yeah. I can't believe. I was at, so, we, I tried happens. to record like people saying happy birthday and like people eating and having it's a nice so time. Bad. And then I looked at all the photos, like I would never share any of these photos. Guys, I mean, listen, it's only the year 2024 and we have not figured out low light technology and cameras yet. Right. Nah, so there's all the excuses for this company. I'm I, I, I think, yeah, there's a lot going on. The fact that it's a body mounted device that is like on mounted on soft fabric, so it's moving around all the time, mm -hmm. uh, definitely adds to the like fact why the pictures are so blurry, uh, and especially bad in low light. Um, but that's like the least of my issues with it. Uh, we talked about the projector being bad, we, and which what I was most hyped for. The second thing I was most hyped for was having a camera that I would wear around all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to get down to the like actual yeah. thing it's supposed to be good at, which is the AI. And the interactions, right? There are two features I thought were not so bad. <laughs> and I will quickly skim over them. And I know, Fisher, it looks like you have something to say, too. I want to quickly demo also the translate feature because that is the one thing I thought worked well. So I'm really going to, and I know one of our live stream uh, audience members is asking for it. So translate to Mandarin. Don't know, don't know if that worked. Cool. I don't think, you you didn't get that trust light, so I don't think it registered your Yeah, chat. exactly. So let's do you it have to look again. down. Translate to Mandarin. There we go. Okay. So remember, you have to press, press, say your thing, and then let go on the humane AI pins. What's uh, the translate? What's the translate? It was, it was I, it just said Pai Zhang Zhao Pian, which is uh, take a photo, uh, which I did not say. Uh, so I don't know what's happening. But anyway, once I say <laughs> translate to Mandarin, uh, 
<laughs> the AI pin is supposed to wait for me to hold down two fingers on the touchpad and be like, and say my thing, and then it would translate it either from Mandarin to English or to, from English to Mandarin for me. It, it's smart enough to know what. So I'm gonna do it now, okay? 你们喜欢我们的节目吗? Do you like our show? Huh. I mean, that took longer than I uh, usually like get out of it, but it's it's smart and it's it works. Uh, it's a uh, translation engine wherever it's derived from. I, I'm not quite sure if it's Google Translate or whatever. It's fairly accurate. I've, I've tried to trip it up with colloquialisms in Mandarin and it's you know quite okay. I'll do I'll do a bit more of a demo of this when we're in our segment break uh, on this live stream, but that was good. The other thing that is good I will point out is vision. Um, so it's a beta feature. You basically can ask the pin to like scan what's in front of you and tell you what's in there. It is, it's hard to imagine why you would use this other than the accessibility scenario, which is if you're low vision, you have visual impairments, you could use this to describe things in front of find things for you. Cause it does tell you like, I was like, Oh, are there socks in this room? And it was like, yes, in the bottom right corner, not bottom right corner, <laughs> but like near the door or like near the shelf. So it was smart enough to do those things. Mm -hmm. Do you guys similar... agree, Julian and uh, Fisher? Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I had a similar experience, which is not, cri not critical or terribly useful, but it was a useful window for me into a moment where I was reading a book. The book's title was in another language. And mm. I, I just hit the pen and I said, translate the title of this book for me. And it, you know, it took five seconds, but then it was like, oh, here's what the title of the book is. I didn't have to take my phone out. I didn't really have to do much work. I got it in that moment. Now, again, mm. not a particularly powerful, not going to change my life, right. but an interesting convenience. And it made me see why the product existed in someone's mind. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's so much potential with it. Like mm -hmm. even when you're walking down the street, you see a, a picture or a, a poster. Oh, who's that person on there? You know, I did this. I was at the Condé Nast office yesterday. We lots of Vogue covers. I walked past one. I was like, who's that? Oh, it's Steve Lacey. Perfect. Walked nice. past another one. Who's that? Oh, it's Lady Gaga. It's not Lady Gaga, by the way. It's just a <laughs> random model. Yeah, uh, and no. then I'm, 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 at, I'm at our snack table and I'm like, tell me what's on the table. And it says there are two unopened bags of Lay's, uh, one original, one barbecue. And I both were barbecue and both of them were not open, by the way. <laughs> then, weirdly, it said, and on the right is this, uh, a box of Nutrigrain bars. There was no box of Nutrigrain bars. I don't know where it's, or why it said that. It's, it's literally trying to up. dictate your diet. It's like, dump these chips. No, yeah. no, no, so, uh, no. Go find some Nutrigrain like, bars. Someone yeah. walked past me and they were like, wow, it confidently lied about that, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, the hallucinations me. on this thing were pretty bad. And we'll get to that uh, too. I, I, I encountered the same things where like, and this is one of my gripes with this AI in general. When I held out something and said, look at this and tell me what to do with it, right? That's one of the like the prompts that they suggest you try. <laughs> it it is? correctly identified that I was holding out <laughs> highlighter like for the face, uh -huh. but it was like describing all the things like this carry on to cream is good for the skin. It's great for the, but it never tells me what to do with it. It's like <laughs> highlighter is not something you just smear all over your freaking face makeup tip this is for like places you want to like bring out um uh, make look you know higher or taller than other elements of your face you don't just smear highlighter on your face you look like a shiny <laughs> terrestrial i guess but like you know what i mean like it's it yeah. never actually answers your question well and all my ai was... sorry go ahead questions was 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 like that oh every time i asked the question it never directly answered me i don't know julian was that true for you I mean, it depends. I mean, one of their prompts was also like, look at this coffee machine or espresso machine and tell me how to how to use it, right? Yeah. One of the things that they suggested you can try with it. And when I did that, it just said, uh, it tried to explain how the pin works. Like, <laughs> you can use your pin. I was like, that's, yeah. that's not what I was asking. But, you know, so there's all of that where you, if you can't confidently rely on this thing time and time again to like give you an answer and also not make you doubt the answer, yeah. It, you just can't rely on it. This That's is like, exactly right. This is the problem with every AI technology, by the way. It's not just these devices, but yes. these devices are the worst of it because it's like, okay, with Copilot and Windows or whatever, you could go Google something if you don't trust like what Copilot is giving you. If this device, if all it is, is powered by this thing you can't trust, yeah. th this is, what are we even doing here? Yeah. You know? 
And, and like it, one of the strengths of the product was positioned to be, at least in my mind, that it's, mm -hmm. oh, it's not just a chat GPT-4 button. It, we use Microsoft, we use Wolfram Alpha, we use uh, you sure. know, whatever, you know. And Their I'm own like, models. okay, well, that, yeah, oh, cool. That's a, that's a custom mix. Maybe it gives me something contextually sensitive for, for each request. But what happens is you ask it, when is the next boat from South Brooklyn to Wall Street? And it tells you, and it's almost right, but it's nine minutes wrong. That's more than <laughs> enough to miss the boat. And then you ask it, it by the way, it, it, hilarious that this happened because it screwed up in the initial launch video about that eclipse question famously. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. the best place yeah. to view it is in New Mexico. No, it's not. I asked on the eclipse day, uh, I was like, when is the closest New York City will get to totality? It's just uh, 2, 2 38 p.m. It's like more <laughs> than an hour wrong. No. And I'm like, well, how, how, how is this still happening? And I think, Devinder, you said what I mm -hmm. wanted to say. It's not, that is not a problem with the AI pin. That is a problem with AI. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. As we use it and LLMs as we use them. And, and, and Julian, I think you said it in your review, unless it's a hundred percent accurate, then anytime yeah. it screws up, if it screws up once, if it gives you the wrong answer once, you should never trust anything powered by it. It's, this it's should funny. be a forever beta thing. I've talked to several companies like leaning into AI. Microsoft has told me like, Hey, you know, we're just learning. We're just learning here. This is a learning <laughs> experience. It's going to make mistakes. It's and I, I told them like, I, I would fire somebody if they just kept making mistakes at me, you yes. know? Yes. I, I, I meant to say th this is something that came up in my review too, which is that like a lot of the issues that AI pin, uh, threw out at me were issues that Siri and Google assistant and even Alexa right. all like solved long ago. Right. It would be like listening or like it would a be very slow to respond compared to like my iphone b like i said not directly answer my question the only thing it really got right was that it can handle contextual follow-ups and i'm like yes it is the year of our lord 2024 of course i don't need to repeat my entire question from the start right so i don't know it feels a little outdated for an eight hundred dollar or seven hundred to start seven hundred dollar Oh, yeah. and don't forget, don't forget, you pay an extra $24 a month for the AI service and the company's cellular oh, service, man. which rides on T-Mobile and is capped at 4G. Um, $24 a month, okay, for all of that, which without which you cannot use the AI pin. Uh, you still have access to your data, but you cannot use the AI pin. And don't forget, if you, I know I'm screaming. If Please you scream. want, if yes. you want to play music, <laughs> You, <laughs> after the 90 day free trial with purchase of AI pin for $700, you will need to pay an extra $11 a month to use Tidal because they only work with Tidal. Okay, I'm done screaming at you all. But I mean, I, lo I love this product. This is an amazing product. Oh, uh, I so. All right. I think, I think the, 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 the $24 a month thing is like, I, I get it. I, I, I think if the product were, were better, it would be easier to justify. But I do think there's like, you're getting unlimited calls. It's a it's a cellular plan. You're getting unlimited text. You're getting unlimited queries to 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 LLMs for for whatever that's worth. That's a fair amount of of value, I think, to be to be delivering on the uh, it, again. If if you have a use for it, counterpoint. I yeah. This, I yes. can do like, all of all that. All of us disagree. I, I can do all of that on my phone. Yes. <laughs> also, yes. Um, I compared a lot of the AI results with like Gemini on my Android phone. Yeah. And also with my Nest Hub. Parity with all the answers for the most part. In fact, more often than not, it, the results were better on the phone because mm -hmm. if there was a question about it, I could actually see the result. Like yeah. I, uh, Google Lens, by the way, really amazing. Uh, when I asked the pin to tell me what I'm looking at and it gave me the wrong answer, I tried it with Google Lens and I could actually see the correct answer because I was able to verify it, right? Um, and in general, like, you know, if I'm capable of getting the same results, whether, the, whether it's with Vision or with AI Mic, through my phone versus this thing like it just is like the okay so the the big solving here is that i don't have to pull out my phone from my pocket then um and no i get i just, just think like if, if, if you're if you're already what what does gpt access cost like 20 bucks a month right so like if you are in the market for this product you probably already pay that or you was it's like the rabbit thing or it's like you get perplexity with it and it's like well then the, then that's why you should spend 200 dollars on the r1 because that's that makes it worth it to me i feel like that's that's 
justifies it. And the the unlimited texting and calling and data, yeah. whatever, is just it should crazy. it should just work with your GPT key though. Like if you subscribe to it, you get a key right. that you can plug into other services, and like it hooks into that API just to mm. use use right. the AI that you're already paying for. So oh, again, by the way, we're fair. also yeah. forgetting to mention that the texting functionality you have you're I... using a new cell phone number, uh, so you can't what? share this phone number with your personal cell phone number. Oh. So you have to even... tell everyone you text. Was... Do, do we? Do we, do we should do a whole podcast about it. texting. I do we need to get through it it's horrible it now. oh god now okay. do it now so we, we have to talk about other things <laughs> at a point. we will we will but, but this we'll, poor device two minutes to talk about it really quickly yeah. right now so messaging like julian said you get a d different number you you have to tell everyone this is your new number so the first thing we all texted each other from our pins was hey this is julian hey this is julian <laughs> ai pin and uh then for me i was like hey can you send a text message to julian Ch Ch chokatsu and it was like sure I've told Julian Chakatu that <laughs> uh, this message, hey, how's it going? Just checking in, buddy, or something. And did, like literally nothing I would ever say to you, Julian. And by the way, can you tell people what my name on your phone showed up as? Uh, oh, Bar Barna Baram Sorry. I think it, was. So it was a number that someone else already owned. Wow. I got yeah, it was a weird number. Though. Uh, yeah, I tried to send you a text, Sherlyn, which you didn't receive because it said, sending that text to Cheryl. I don't have a Cheryl in my poor phone. Cheryl, poor Cheryl. Poor Cheryl. So oh, she got a message. So <laughs> texting from this is so weird because you have to, if you wanted to say exactly what you're saying, which is a very yeah. weird thing, uh, you have to say dictate yes. and then follow it with what you want it to say. If you don't say that, it'll just send a thing that it thinks you want to say. And right. if that's the case, it then moderates your content. So when I tried to say you're dumb to someone, <laughs> It, yep. said it won't send that message because yep. it was yep. offensive content and Let's be that nice. is wild let's be nice i I'm, wouldn't sorry, that that person was being dumb but still <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't send a dirty joke the first time i asked it but i badgered it into it with four successive requests and then it eventually did it wow. and it was a, the lamest dirty joke i've ever heard how how long do you give this company, guys? Like to me, this feels like um, when Mr. Marcus Brownlee uh, reviewed the Fisker Ocean, right? And within mm -hmm. two weeks, like that company fell apart because he reviewed a thing that was shipping, and they were like, "Wait, wait, wait for the software updates. Wait, it's gonna get better." People yeah. are already buying the crazy expensive car. Um, I feel I like this is already the worst gadget of the year. And I don't know how this company will survive after this. I mean, I think the Fisker situation, they clearly had a lot of issues yes. going well before yes. that video dropped. That mm -hmm. just didn't help. Um, I feel like this company, Humane, is in a stronger position financially for the most part. So I don't see them disappearing anytime soon. But like, you know, a year from now, if things don't drastically change, then perhaps. But mm -hmm. I, I don't see that. I think they have the backing to keep them going for some time. Yeah, I would I would wager two or three iterations of of this product, and I I I wonder if they'll have to fall back on an emergency plan that will be much less ambitious. But like, yeah. look, this thing has applications that make some sense in cert for certain people. Let's make a version of it that is a phone accessory. Let's walk back all the visionary, replace mm -hmm. your phone mm -hmm. chip, and let's build something that 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 people might actually buy. Um, because twenty we're in twenty twenty four and not twenty fifty two. Yeah. Um, uh, is, and if they're able to adapt, and I think uh, they're very smart people. Look, there's a lot of smart <laughs> stuff here, but they're going to have to. Listen, when smart people do dumb things, it's our mm -hmm. job to say, like, this is bad. Okay? Well, I know. Like, I, I think we've been doing that. I just yeah. think it's important to, like, get the whole. You know, I don't know. The, I was, the, trying, the, the I was not picture. trying to justify that mobile cost, sir, Mr. Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, no, $30 a month. Oh, I'll just throw another $30 a month. Look, it's important, look, it, 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 it's imp it's important <laughs> to remember. <laughs> that uh, I have 18 different cell plans, and I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, you're, so you're, like, you're I, yeah. I will say I think they have a lot more engineering and investor backing to them than a lot of other companies I've seen try similar things. So yeah. I think they'll stick around, and these software releases that they're talking about do sound like they're going to come. And again, to their credit, because there's so few to be found, every time they release a software update in our review window despite us not knowing anything about mm -hmm. them, uh, is that it does improve the experience. The The speaker, the music playback service just wasn't working for a bit. And then like after a few days, it did start working miraculously. So like I feel as if we're, like one of our viewers said in the chat and the vendor has said in the past multiple times before, mm -hmm. we are beta testing this thing for them, right? Uh, the first gen product is not it. Is it something that might work in three generations? I don't know. 
Uh, but they, they have of... raised, by the way, $230 million. So that is a chunk of money, but I think somebody's yes. just going to buy them at some point. Like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I think that's very likely. I mean, we, well. we, we also know that, you know, following this, the Rabbit R1 is going to be coming not too, yep. like, pretty soon. And I am very excited to try it. This has dampened a lot of my expectations for it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I do Same. know that they already have a lot of capabilities with APIs and, you know, they, they can actually connect to a lot of third-party services, at least they initially said so. So I'm a little more hopeful for that thing and I don't have to wear it and risk being burned. So that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I think the world of AI wearables is a little doomed. Um, and by the way, I wanted to give everyone uh, tuning in a heads up that we have a special guest joining us of our little bit. Uh, for this special wonderful day uh, and hopefully that person can get their act together and join in do we uh, want to wrap for q a so that we can uh, do yes we should again. wrap oh yeah let's wrap for q a look at that Q &A. special guest hey, hello wow. how are you your volume is low v um it's because he's got his hat on his mic <laughs> v while <laughs> you figure that out i'm gonna cat. do the wrapping cool. up for q a okay do it well, uh, I think you'll get a better sense of our individual thoughts and feelings about the AI pin by checking out all of our full reviews, respectively, uh, at Wired, Michael Fisher's YouTube channel, aka the Mr. Mobile, wow. uh, and on Engadget.com. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us today. I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about on this topic. Um, Julian, where can people find you online? Uh, at Julian Chikatu is everywhere. Nice. And wired, so come on! Oh yeah, and, wi and know, wired. Nothing yeah. to <laughs> wired. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mobile Michael Fisher. You can find Mr. Michael Fisher at Mr. Mobile or Captain Two Phones <laughs> on Threads and um, you know the other place. Okay, well, thank you both again for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having. Me. Ciao. All right. So yeah, let's. Hello. Get to Hello. Yeah, hi, chat. Chat, we are finally talking directly to you. If this oh is your God. first time being on the Engadget live stream, one, thank you. Welcome. This is the first time that we're doing a live stream in, I think, a little more than a year at the very least. No, uh, under no. a year. It was really? under. It was under, like oh, it's under August. September 2023. Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, time has no meaning. But thank <laughs> you for joining either way. Um, we can't talk directly to chat all the time because this also does go out as an audio show. And I want to make sure that people who are only listening to the audio, maybe they live in a different time zone, maybe they don't live in the U.S. and it's really hard for them to tune in to the live stream just to make sure that they don't feel too left out. So I banked a bunch of questions. Be sure to just remember that I'm always banking questions. So uh, first one. I genuinely did not put this one first just because it, the user was bigger Ben to you, but bigger <laughs> Ben to you did say, I just canceled my order. So thank you for yep. saving me $800. Yeah. Love we're, to save people money. Yeah, I, mm, I can't even. Shush, you have too much money. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, well, no, I just, okay. So you can wrong. also yeah. uh, send that, that money to another Ben, my Venmo. It, <laughs> So Mark Dell says, best line from Sherlyn's review video is, I'm pretty strong and I can lift my arms. <laughs> I just I just realized how stupid that is. <laughs> I can oh, support my own weight. Listen, I have these big meaty arms. They, they require some energy to lift. Um, I want to shout out the Tuareg says, hey guys, greetings from bad, bad Russia, by the way. Oh. Ben, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on. Yeah, yeah. And similar to what Mark said, uh, Danny Winget said. Or Woo, Danny Wing Winget! Winget. Hello. Okay. Uh, Winget. Says, Winget? Whatever. He doesn't care. Oh, <laughs> says, you get one muscular arm from it, so that's an unadvertised feature. Mm, word. All I could think about is that one panel from Family Guy, uh, Quagmire with the really, really beefy arm. Oh, no. That is a very different context, though, and we're not getting into that. Uh, oh, no. Great. Cohen says, I was so excited for this device, and I'm so disappointed. This device is just not ready. It should not be shipped yet. I could get used to the form, not incomplete form 
it's in, not or not the incomplete form that it's right, in. Right, right, right. So yeah. yes, this is getting to the idea that we are just all beta testing this for yep. eight hundred dollars. And you know what? Now that V is on the stream, I am remembering the first foldables. And we also said that some of Samsung's first foldables, yep. and I think yep. we all said that we were beta testing those for Samsung as well. So things come full circle. Yeah. Can I quickly shout out that Mark Dell says, Michael's video did sell me on one thing, but not the pin. A Volante shirt. Hey, yeah, get those Volante design jackets. They're the best. There you go. <laughs> okay, so we have a lot more that we want to get to, so just... Uh, I think it would be I, uh, there was a really <laughs> quick one uh, demo I want to do, and feel free to do demos, yeah, sure. uh, Julian V and Fisher, if you have the time. Uh, uh, Mark Dell asked if I can ask the pin uh, to say to make a poem about bad AI devices. So let's see. Can you compose a poem about eight hundred dollar AI devices that are bad? Glad you're giving that a shot. Now you just have to wait for 20 minutes. In the minutes. realm of wires and whirring gears lies the AI device, not as wise as it appears. With a hefty price tag of 800 more, it spouts misinformation galore. <laughs> Silicon brain, ignorant and scale, fumbles and stumbles. A robotic epic fail. Oh. Promising mastery, but in truth, quite obtuse. A costly mistake, a technological ruse. Put that okay. in your review. Wow. I'm I putting that in my review. I am putting that in the audio version because yes. that was so good. That's the end I'm of the episode. I'm putting it in my review. Put it in. Uh, yeah, transcribe uh, it. Wow. Big time wow. credit to Mark Dell for that prompt. How did I I am so that? happy that we have that recorded. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mark says it wrote its own review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very self-aware um, of thing. Yeah. I really want to quickly address the um, questions that people are bringing up about why are we gone and et cetera. We'll get to that uh, near the end of the show. Feel free to come back to it. Um, uh, there are other things that people brought up. I thought, oh yeah, someone uh, off X asked, how did I get burned? How long was I using it? Where did I get burned? So it's basically that it runs, A, I'm more sensitive to heat than most people. You'll see me walking around in winter with no jacket on. I hate heat. So that is like a personal thing. The thing runs hot around its edges on its touchpad. If I have it placed near the edge of my shirt like that, when I go over to reach for something or when I lean forward and again, cross my arm a little bit, I end up touching the edge and it's usually so hot that I'm like, oh, wow. It's like an wow. instant. And that's what I mean by burn. Not that I left a mark or a scar. So that's I want to be very That's still clear. noticeable for a device today. Like phones don't do that anymore. Maybe a gaming laptop will do it, but they try not to, you know? Yeah. Sherlyn, yeah. how um, do you survive growing up in Singapore if you hate heat that much? No, I, I don't <laughs> know question. how. It, that's a good question. I don't know. I really don't. I used to walk around jackets in Singapore. Um, v is here to talk about some other news, but I wanted to mm -hmm. see if you had any thoughts to share that we didn't cover about the Humane AI pin, because I know you reviewed it too. Well, first off, is my audio okay, Ben? Uh, your your audio sounds, I don't weird. know, low quality. It sounds, sounds yeah. weird. Make sure so it's the right weird. mic you got. Yeah, yeah. I think you should check your inputs. Check your I audio settings. Do. Yeah. So should. then while you do that, Fisher and Julian, anything you all want to shout out before you go? I was talking a lot. I, Julian? Uh, I think we shouted enough. Uh... <laughs> sure enough. I think we need a separate like Instagram live stream for the four of us. You Are you advocating you totally for another group chat? What? Totally yeah. <laughs> what is oh, that? a little text message. That was mine. Oh, V got a text message. Okay. Have it read it live. Oh. It clearly could have only been one of you. Could, could yeah, right. Just ask it to play hang it on, out. Hang on. Send a text message to Chris Velasco. God. Don't you have to dictate what you want to say now? No. Hey, Chris, how's your day going? To Chris okay, okay. Velasco. <laughs> Shirley, not in several, the entirety of our friendship, have you ever given that much of a shit about me? Yeah, I do yeah, not care yeah, about yeah, day. more. Yeah. yeah, I sent a text to my to my college best friend, and I didn't specify the content bent to your to your. This is how I learned. You don't have to do that because it said, "Life's a journey, and I'm on my way." <laughs> <laughs> Life is a highway. Oh God! Yeah. By the way, now um, she's killing song quotes or song lyrics. Yeah. Oof. That just came in was a message from Julian from two days ago. Oh my God! Great. To my bachelor party, which, by the way, Fisher. Oh, 
to get a second to it. Yeah, I got you today. Sorry. I'm sorry. Just... Shout out to David Amell in the chat who RSVP to my wedding this week. Thanks, bud. Yay. Shout out David Amell and shout out V who's getting married soon. Woohoo. Yeah. Right. So I'm allowed to talk about this for just a second. Following the great tradition of our friends in Smosh, proud and pleased to announce that finally, Sherlyn and I are getting married. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. V, check your mic. Check your mic. And also yeah, the live animal that you're talking into. It is. Yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on with the mic. I might, if we want to do yep. my bit for the podcast, I could just record separately for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, definitely also record separately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we always want you to be recording yep. locally, too. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yep. Yeah. I think. You might need to check your input going into the platform that we're using. Yeah, this video ninja thing. Yeah, but cool. Sherlyn, are we mm -hmm. are we going to move on to other news? Or also, yeah. you had a call. Uh, so do we need to cut off after this? No, I, I, I said I'm going to skip the call. So I okay. have until noon now. OK, good. I okay, so thanks again, Julian and Fisher. We'll try to uh, maybe plan another live stream just for our socials. Yeah, thanks, guys. Things. Yeah, yeah this that was would fun. be lovely. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah. It's always very nice to see you again. Thank thanks. you, guys. Yeah. Devendra, you and I have a foldable fight to happen at some point. Let's yeah. When they get better, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I want them to be better. I just want things to be good. Like, that's my yes. role as a critic, you know? <laughs> Make good things. All right, goodbye, like, both we'll... of you. Bye. Um, and Bye. we'll continue recording the rest of the podcast. V, Bye. just bring up your voicemail. <laughs> Bye, guys. Um, and chat, we're going to start the rest of the podcast. We might not have segment breaks until we get through the whole show. V, just for your segment, I think we'll just have you talk about your news item and then move on. Uh, okay. and say bye to you and then move on with the rest of our show okay v why do you have a live animal on your microphone that is a wind filter <laughs> so for I, heavy wind yeah so. Well, so yes i occasionally like guest host the post reports podcast right they i guess like there's just enough echo in my like something space. but you could get like a foamy. You sound very low like right now. yeah well, it has the foam, but like yeah. it's you that yeah, other it's... thing is a wind filter. I know, but here's here's what? why I use it. No, 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 hear me out. Yeah, yeah. There's a method to my madness. So I put this on, and I feel like this allows me to get the voice quality I want because I'm a very sort of like low intensity. It's very low. I don't know if it's something know what's we can change on the back thing. end yeah. for yeah, from I our side, know. Dev. Kind Nothing. Of I can. It's it's just not a good. Okay. Wherever your source is coming in from. The... Yeah, I'm also wondering if maybe it could be a issue with your preamp, like. Is, is everything plugged in and not turned working on? or something? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's or... all like the, the Scarlet is definitely active and doing its thing. Um, it sounds good once you lean into it more. I think your gain is really low. Something. Well, it turned it up really. Yes. Is that there it? it is. What did you have for breakfast? Oh, wait, see, okay. Again, I when I co -host, when I guest host that podcast, you're like, turn your gain down all the way. Like no gain. That's fine. Yeah, they, that's, what, that's what was happening. So they a little more. Turn it down a little more. Oh my Wait, god! Keep keep talking. Keep talking. Hey. Okay, this is better. This is better. I have no idea what they. Yeah, I mean, the people at Post your... Reports know what they're talking about. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. It's not working for this stream, but it's all good. Let's go. Sick. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, let's resync. We got a two sync mm -hmm. episode just because. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. So I'm gonna count down from three, and at the end of three, we all snap again. Clap okay. your hands, chat if you want to snap noise. also. Let's do it. So three, two, one. And quick room tone done. Let's get into it. I just want to shout out that football DE60 in the chat said Chris, Chilo uh, Chris Velosco, which you, but also we, V and I have begrudgingly admitted that it would be Sherlasco if there was a portmanteau of our name. Ew. And it's just... How did we? Have... I think you just started using it one day. Mm -hmm. I just used it for a playlist that we created for like karaoke thingies or something. Wasn't it Sherlasco? When when we would like drive at trade uh, shows like IO or Dub Dub. Maybe. Anyway, it's disgusting. Let's just move on. Okay, Please. I'm gonna intro you at the top of this segment. Okay. Okay. Well, this week was really packed. I mean, there were a lot of different things happening. Google also had an event, and I'll cover that in a little bit. But before we get into that, we had a little bit of news from Apple uh, that broke today. And joining us 
on this very special episode, chock full of surprises. To break down this news is the Washington Post's Chris Velasco. Hello, V. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it is honestly so good to see you both. Yeah. Uh, it's just great. Uh, disclosure. Uh, Chris Velasco used to work at Engadget and is now persona non grata. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> V. Here I am. So clearly there's a disconnect somewhere. <laughs> Fix it. Yes. V, can you, can you tell us what happened with Apple uh, this morning? Yeah. So on what is today? Thursday? On yes. Thursday morning, Apple announced what feels like a pretty significant walk back to one of its most consistently annoying repair restrictions for iPhone. So mm -hmm. in the past, if you wanted to get a broken iPhone fixed, you basically had three choices of parts. You could go get your device repaired with genuine Apple parts, which cost the most amount of money. You could go for aftermarket parts made by just third-party suppliers. That tends yeah. to be ch very cheap, but th those parts run the gamut. Or you could try and use used Apple parts, so genuine Apple parts that just came out of an iPhone that exists in the world already. The problem yeah. is if you use those used parts or those aftermarket parts, you can't pair them in such a way that full functionality returns, right? So if you've got a screen swap, auto brightness will stop working, true tone will Ugh. stop working, and for a little bit you'll get like a message saying, hey, you're using a non-genuine Apple part, even when you're using a genuine Apple part. What Apple is doing as of this fall is with the iPhone 15 and newer, you will be able to use used Apple parts for repairs hmm. without running into those issues, which is really nice because if, you, if you're a person who frankly can't afford Apple store prices for an out of warranty mm -hmm. repair, or if you just live somewhere where you can't easily access a place that has these parts and these authorized repair technicians, Sometimes a local repair shop is your best bet. So yeah. under these new rules, theoretically, you might be able to pay less for an iPhone repair that makes your phone work just like it used to. I So this is still first-party Apple parts, just secondhand, or? Yes, exactly. So if someone, so there are a lot of places to get parts out there. There are some people, some shops, some outfits who will harvest parts from older iPhones. Maybe they're pulling them mm. from eBay. Maybe they just have, like, devices people have left behind so they kind of re try to reuse those parts so there's exactly where the supply comes from is a little scattershot and apple has basically told us like we're not going to sell anyone used parts which mm -hmm. to me like makes sense like of course they would want to sell yeah. their genuine new parts all the time but right. if apple really wanted to kind of put the kibosh on aftermarket stuff which they don't. They say that they fully believe that third-party parts should be used in repair as long as the, the owners know about it. They're yeah. still, as, as you know, moving forward under the system, kind of treated like second-class citizens because Apple can't calibrate those parts to work the way a genuine one would. Right. Sure. The crazy part, the crazy twist to all this is <laughs> Apple says this, this change is not being made in response to recent rights to, re right to repair legislation. Uh-huh. But... Just last month, actually, I think like two weeks ago, the governor of Oregon signed maybe one of the strictest right to repair laws in the country, which, among other things, yep. includes a requirement that says you, a company that makes a device, cannot restrict the functionality of a phone, even if it uses yep. aftermarket parts. So Apple is partially, partially like moved to make its iPhones easier to repair, but now it has to figure out like, okay, how do we do this do we even do this? Like, is there a technical way to make this yep. work that that adheres to the law? If you, uh, I think the fine, if starting in 2027, if you don't do this as a company, is $1,000 a day. Yep. So Apple could basically sell one fewer iPhone a day, and it would be totally <laughs> fine. And it's, like, crazy. Oh, in, God. There was a case, like, two years ago in the Netherlands where... I think it was like a dating app there was some sort of like kerfuffle over dating app whatever the netherlands basically fined apple i think it was like five million dollars a week for 10 weeks until they hit the legal maximum and it, i would imagine apple just at the end of that once they hit the legal max just like paid it and didn't worry about it yeah. so much so a thousand dollars a day is basically nothing so it, yeah it can so easily afford to just like <laughs> violate that law and have a great day i'm just like how does Apple get away with like the way it was before too, right? Like, oh, you know, what was the rationale, I guess, for like if you well, use control, part, control is Apple. the is the best thing for them. I understand, right? like, I understand yeah. their their rationale, but I meant the rationale to make it make sense to audience. Like, what is Apple sure. telling people is the reason uh, that when you use a third party 
component to repair, say, your screen or whatever, the auto brightness just stops working. Like, what can what is the actual reason for that, if anything? So, so I spoke to John Turtis. He's the senior vice president of hardware engineering at Apple, and the sort of mm-hmm. refrain that he kept returning to was, you know, when Apple is designing its products, it designs it designs these things to last for a really long time, and the sort of the priorities, the north stars that they design against are, are things like privacy and security. So. In a, in a screen, like, maybe that's not the biggest deal in the world. Right. You could probably make that work. And evid- clearly, that's not, like, a deal breaker. What right. I think they have, have had more of an issue in the past with is what some of these laws and some of these requirements would mean for, like, touch ID or face ID. Things that yeah, have, sure. uh, like, a critical impact on securing your personal data on your phone. And That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And, like, going forward, Apple has said, so, we're like, this fall, you'll be able to use like replacement, I believe it's batteries, screens, and cameras, kind of no problem. And they're okay. working on support in future models of the iPhone to be able to use used face ID sensors. So like this only helps people who have bought an iPhone last year and going forward. But like they they are working to kind of figure out the 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 biometric kind of implications here too. But yeah, when if you ask Apple why why this was ever a thing, they're basically saying we want our iPhones to work a certain way. A lot of that has to do with security, and also yeah. we can't we can't make some things work if we don't know exactly what the part is. Which is a fair. I think that is a fair excuse. It's, fair. it's just it's a, that it's, I think generally quite fair. Yeah, they they've always you know preferred security. And the thing about Android devices is that they have secure elements, but it is that it is a less constrained platform, right? Like Apple has everything so locked down. Um, I hope this doesn't lead to like potential insecurity, like with some of these parts. But yeah. I think for most people, this is a good thing. Cheaper repairs, hopefully. Cheaper repairs, cheaper Easier repairs. repairs. Yeah, on the whole, I think mm-hmm. it's positive. Apple, I think, clearly has a lot more thinking to do about where it wants its repairs to go and sort of what limitations it could feasibly try to to work around. But yeah, yeah I think generally, you if you bust, if you break your phone, like, you will have a slightly easier time going forward. I do want to point out um, earlier this morning, it seems like uh, that uh, we saw a report. iPhone users in 92 countries received a spyware attack warning from Apple, but the company didn't say it, how it detected these incidents. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if, uh, V, you're up to speed yet on that or you have I'm any not. Thoughts. So I, I'm, a l- mm-hmm. I'm slightly more familiar with, I think, a similar incident in India, which got Apple mm-hmm. in some trouble with the, the Modi government. But yeah, like to my understanding, they don't generally indicate Explain. publicly. Yeah, like right. I'm sure, I'm sure there is a sense to which the governments of the countries in which these these attempts were made have a sense of what is going on. But that's not a thing yeah. that they're going to tell us for 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 security reasons. Um, yeah, that that yeah, one. This, in... this continues to be a thing. Like I'm, it's good that this feature exists. It's slightly weird that countries like India have taken that feature is slightly personal in some way. Like it's meant to, I think undermine the government is, is on some level their interpretation of that, that feature. But, but yeah. Well, thanks V for helping us break down some of this uh, Apple news. I just really quickly, do you have any, did you cover any of that Google news that happened this week too? What's what Google news? I've been in humane. <laughs> All of it. Lovely. All of it. <laughs> oh, well, I tell you what. Uh, let me let me tell you quickly about what happened, and then we'll we'll have yeah, you talk about that. Hey, catch me up, Sherman. Catch you up. It's like you're a listener a humane, of the Engadget podcast. <laughs> yes. Gosh, catch you up is one of the things you can tell the AI pin. pin. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so uh, on the other side of the the Apple spectrum, we've got Google. I guess was that a nice way to describe them? Anyway, sure, sure. Um, this week on Tuesday, or at least this week in Las Vegas, uh, Google's actually hosting an event called the Next Twenty Four event. Um, it's mostly for its cloud products, but we did get a bunch of AI centric news out of it. Um, specifically, that it is making a tool called Google Vids um, for businesses. Uh, it's basically an AI video generator that will help you make punchier slideshows, basically. If you check out Pranav Dixit's uh, article over on Engadget.com, you'll see uh, images and video on how this feature works. It's basically um, a way for, I guess, people making presentations to create videos based on prompts or that sort of thing. So um, 
it's I guess like a version of Sora, but like not creating people or a story is just slides. I guess yeah, we slides are hard, you know. I uh, guess we needed all, a video all the ASM instead of a like, slideshow. Can you do this work for me? I am I am late tired. Just just like look at this data <laughs> and do do a thing, please. It it's apparently like you you give it a simple prompt to like create what a recap video or a presentation or whatever, and then you give it a Google Doc full of that information. So for example, like you took meeting minutes and you're like, create a recap video. And then <laughs> it'll be like, here is a video about your mi minutes of this very hot board of directors meeting. Uh, you can add like photos from a Google Drive file. You can, um, it will generate things like a script and a voiceover that you can then, uh, I guess, look at and maybe edit, but you can re record your own voiceover. Um, you can select from templates like research research proposal, new employee intro, team milestone, quarterly business update. I don't know about y'all. I do not like watching videos when I can click through a yes. slideshow or scroll yes. through. And thank you for joining so. our live stream, everybody. It's great. Great to have you here. <laughs> um, we love, this is a great, uh, great, great video option. All with yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you're, um, you're right. So Too much video content. Bad. Bad for the world, unfortunately. Um, other than this live stream. Other than the uh, live. this live stream notwithstanding. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, other workspace features, but if you're interested in testing vids, it will be available in June. It's first coming to Workspace Labs, uh, which is an opt-in feature. Uh, there are some other workspace uh, AI-related sort of summary or like prompt type features that are uh, were announced too. But another interesting thing, and maybe Devendra, you might have like yeah. um, a take on this. I don't know. But Google this week at Next also announced its first ARM-based CPU for data centers called Axion. Uh, v, how do you feel about data center CPUs? I am so, so excited to just talk about this for the rest of my life. Please start Wonderful. and don't stop. Wonderful. I When I took this briefing, I was like, they were like, this is our first ARM-based CPU. I was like, okay. no, we need to answer. Yeah. But then I was wrong. Um, this is just for data centers. I mean, Dev, do you, are you familiar with like There's the benefits the, yeah. of ARM? Yeah, really? Yes, yes. ARM, lower power, lower power, higher efficiency, yes. yada, yada, yada. Everybody's going to ARM now. That's great. Right, Good exactly. Good job, Google. Good job. Yeah. So like Google, it's, it, this is its first ARM-based CPU for data centers, but Amazon uh -huh. has done this already. Like there's other like big AI businesses that are already like using ARM-based CPUs. So nothing quite new necessarily in the industry, but it is for Google. Um, and then I saw another like bunch of demos during my briefing, mm -hmm. uh, like this thing called agents that like creates, it's basically like a open, like GPT service that like allows businesses to create their own chatbots basically. So fun. Good job, Google. The only thing I want to point out in it, like out of all this uh, about the Google uh, event, is that when I was taking my briefing for this on Friday, <laughs> uh -huh. I was like just chilling in my gym doing the briefing from my phone, <laughs> as I always am. <laughs> v is rolling his eyes, and um, this happened at like the briefing was 10 a.m. Eastern to 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday morning, and as some of you might know, at 10:24 a.m. Eastern last Friday. An earthquake shook New York. Uh, <laughs> You're still recovering from it. Like New Yorkers will not <laughs> and stop I was talking like, about it. I will tell you this. I was taking this briefing again on my ground floor gym. I felt nothing. I had no idea what was happening. And then this briefing paused and people were like, um, we're hearing reports of an earthquake in New York area. And we know some of our like listeners are based in that area. So if you need to take time or you need to leave this briefing. I go, and I was like, wait, the earthquake? <laughs> I was like, wait, what happened? Um... <laughs> Because I was so wrapped up in watching this AI demo that Google Amazing. was showing me. Amazing. It was just so cool. Um, but anyway, hey, fun news. There was uh, an earthquake and an eclipse in the week since we had our last episode. Uh, v, did you watch the eclipse at all? I mean, look, I live in San Francisco now. It was fine. Um, but we were very, very far from the path of totality. So mm -hmm. I think the most, I, I whipped out the old Galaxy S 23 ultra because i think nice. the photos better than the s24 ultra threw on that solar filter and got a pretty one pretty nice pick and then i went <laughs> back inside and talked it to my pin some more so i had a great day it's wonderful what a pin and called it a day 
All right. Um, that was it, really. Uh, out of all the news from Google's next twenty four event, I mean, one last bit of like news that the company dropped this week was that it is rolling out its enhanced editing tools that were previously tied to either Pixel phones or like its One subscription uh, are no longer going to require a subscription. So that's kind of nice. You can get things like Magic Editor, um, Photo and Blur, uh, as long as you're a Photos user, whether or not you're on Android or iOS. So that would that was nice to see uh, happen in the land of Google this week. I think that about wraps it up for us for other news. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this brief little segment and catch up. V, we missed you. Thank you, V. It's, yeah, always happy to come by. I missed you both. Uh, it's Truman, I guess we'll see you this weekend. Yeah. I shall. Oh, my God. I'm f- tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, shoot. Tomorrow. Uh, I don't, so I don't why. know. Yeah. So I, I'm having my bachelor party this weekend. Uh, Julian's coming. Sherlyn's coming. <laughs> Julian's my best I'm man. I'm so my hair. Planned it. Aww. I don't. I don't know what. Oh, I know. You know. I do know. Yes, I have the itinerary. Can you give? Can you give me and chat a hint? You'll be very happy. And embarrassed for live streams from the AI pin, the uh, the first (laughs) AI pin bachelor party. Oh wait, okay. So can we set a rule? Do we bring pins or no pins? We'll bring it. It won't do anything. So literally, it doesn't matter. It'll just burn you. It'll just burn you. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Uh, David ML in chat says, "God, he wishes he wasn't wishing your bas- missing your bachelor party." You were invited, uh, bro. We wish but you were going to be there too. You. Yeah, um, and everyone else on the podcast live stream or not, uh, sorry, you're not coming to the bachelor party. But V, <laughs> if people want to send you their congratulations, where can they find you? You know, I think even in the even when I worked at Engadget, I think I just preferred everyone email me if they wanted to yeah. talk to me. So uh, I don't have a fun email anymore. But it's Chris Velasco at WashPost.com. Chris Velasco at washpost.com. Thank you so much yeah, for I joining tried us. I really v. hard to get V at Washpost, and they were like, Too bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, because right, like, more, what... hmm? oh, sorry, I Love stepped it. on the uh, outro, but yeah, you know, what if they wanted to do like a whole vertical on the Fifth Amendment? Yeah. They would need V at... Very useful. At... <laughs> but also, IT people don't want any usernames below two characters, basically. So. Is that a thing? Yeah. I didn't, it's I mean, I guess it's just bad. bad. Bad for a bunch of reasons, yeah. All right. Fine. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for having me, y'all. Congrats, buddy. Thanks, V. Bye. Bye. Send your clip to some yes. of us. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Um, yes. Yep. Send it to me, please. Thank you. Cool. Yes. Bye. Uh, you can always hit me up B- B- if you need info. Okay. Um, chat, we're just going to power through the rest of the show and then maybe quickly do a Q&A at the very end. So yeah. bear with us. We do see all of you still. Yeah. Um, Feel free to drop all the other news. Like, we don't, we don't need these stories. Yeah, I'm dropping all of it. Yeah. I'm going straight into, like, working on maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That was a lot. And we haven't even covered, like, <laughs> a lot of small pieces of news coming out. So let's just focus on the future and looking ahead. Like, Devendra, what are you working on this week? What am I working on this week? I don't know. What, 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 what else is happening? Um, so for some reason, Microsoft did not send out the new Surface Pro 10 and Surface Laptop 6 for work, you know, for, for Enterprise, which is their full mm. name. Uh, mm. So we ordered some. We're going to be taking a look at them. I'm just expecting chip updates, you know, chip you know, chip speed yeah. bumps. But it is, it is always funny when Microsoft is like, I we would rather you don't take a full look at this and that's when i lean in and be like well now i have to yes okay so yeah i'll be i'll be looking at those things and it's also you know important for our like audience because this is like maybe it's not a machine they'll buy themselves but it's a machine they might end up using right and it's good to know it's good to know and it is an iterative you know it's an iterative update on a major product line so that is why i'm looking at but also we're expecting the consumer versions of these devices uh coming maybe Mm -hmm. around build that's probably when they're gonna announce it maybe powered by arm chips uh because there was Hmm. a story at the verge that hey Hey, Microsoft seems to have a lot of uh, a lot of confidence that these ARM chips are pretty good. And I, between the two of us, Sherlyn, we've reviewed so many Windows ARM yeah. devices. And I'm like, good, it's not the chip that's Still the excited. problem; it's Windows. But let's see, exactly. let's see how it goes. Exactly. Um, we are uh, going to keep an eye on that. And then as for me, this week, I mean, I just pushed out a giant baby of a review. It's a big one. It's a Gross. ten pounder. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I did that with in, Mission Pro. I get it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So in the form of the, it's a of baby the from your brain. Preview. Yeah. Right. I do think though, uh, maybe this is sad or happy news for our audience, uh, listener or not, uh, mm-hmm. that I will, that will probably be my last review you'll see on the website for a little bit. Aww. Um, 
it's just it's it's a lot of work for me to like manage all these different things I'm doing while also writing it's reviews. So much. It's yeah. a lot. So um that will be my last byline for a little bit until maybe September or August when Techtober begins again. So just wanted to give people a heads up. But you know, just because my name's not on the site doesn't mean I'm not working on the site. <laughs> <laughs> I always worry a little bit about that, that like uh -huh. I'm so in the behind the scenes. This is the um, trouble with moving to editing is that like, yeah, you, you yeah. just kind of disappear a little. It's unfortunate. Yeah, but I'm still mm -hmm. here. Y'all will still see me. Um, I'm helping out with people on my team uh, around Engadget, get their work up. For example, Sam published this week a Fallout, uh, a review of the Fallout TV series, and he loved it. And I love the headline we landed on, on that piece. It's uh, the Fallout TV series is VATS, a very awesome TV show. Um, Sam's like enthusiasm for this did, series. Did he explain what the acronym meant? He did not. It's, fr it's from the itself. game. It is the, it is, the yeah. mode that you use to target things when you shoot. But that is a really creative headline. And I've seen a couple episodes it's, of this thing. And it's pretty good. Like shocking. That's great. fantastic. Yeah. That is awesome. G uh, Sam, uh, Sam also this week had a busy one uh, and published his Review of the ROG G14, which he believes is the gaming, the 14-inch gaming laptop to beat. Uh, if you're in the market for a gaming laptop, check it out. Yes. Uh, I also want to shout out Devendra that you gamely stepped up to re-review the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> Not uh, really re-review, just sort of like Ish, hey, two months, yeah. two months later, what, what's going on? And yeah, that was fun. Uh, especially because like what was it like last week they rolled out spatial persona, so you yes. spent some time kind of telling us about that, which was yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did that with uh, Norm Chan from Tested, and basically it's yeah. like I invited him into my basement and we hung out and we drew together and we watched some stuff, and it you is a really him. cool. I invited him in because I don't get to hang out with people in real life anymore. So you know, it was cool to have. It felt like somebody was in my house just hanging out with me, and that yeah. is a really cool aspect of the Vision Pro that we didn't see until now. So looking forward to seeing what apple does with that yeah uh and then for for as a refresher to everyone that didn't catch up on last week's episode we did talk about what the spatial personas are supposed to be uh mm -hmm. in that episode so go check it out basically like floating heads in your living room really cool really non-nightmare stuff <laughs> uh and then finally yeah elsewhere on the site uh today dan cooper published a very interesting thing about uh smart rings go check it out and then yeah we've got so much stuff coming up this week suddenly out of nowhere it's like Winter is over. Everyone's emerged from hibernation, and there's just uh -huh. a lot of pieces going out. A lot of news happening. So I guess sometimes we need to take a break, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. And watch TV. A break would be nice. More TV. Yeah. Yeah. Devendra, I guess when I'm lying on my couch, choosing something on Netflix or wherever, what do you recommend I do or watch? Uh, what I recommend first up is uh, Ripley, the new Netflix mm -hmm. show. Uh, it is another adaptation of uh, the talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, based oh. on that original novel and was a great book starring Matt Damon and Jude Law. Jude Law at his like most beautiful phase in that movie. Um, it's a movie about a con man, basically like conning his way into a rich life. And mm. the show just extends that. It is the same basic story. So if you know the twist from Rip from Talented Mr. Ripley, it's kind of all in here. But the show is so well produced. Uh, stars uh, Andrew Scott, I believe. Um, you know, hot priest. Uh, it is really, it is a really fascinating look at a sociopath and what he does to like get ahead Ooh. in life. But also, you know, I kind of look at this sort of like, uh, you know, we've all read great The Great Gatsby. I mean, I feel yes. like there's there's conversations about what The Great Gatsby is, right? That is a book about somebody from the outside kind of looking at these rich, rich people and being like, this really fascinating. They're really like intoxicating. I want to be part of them, but also they're a big problem. I'm going to like stay away partially yeah. it's like i don't want to become one of them whereas the story of ripley is basically like what if i want to be like them i also see that they're terrible but i also want to destroy them and maybe kill them too and that is a little fun and interesting yeah. and maybe maybe yeah. more like the eat the rich mantra that's going around right eat now so i think ripley it is a good looking show it's incredibly well written uh well directed mm -hmm. too like just a lot of great sequences. It is a slow burn of a show, but I think it is well worth your watch, especially if you liked the talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. I uh, have not actually seen the talented Mr. Ripley. You should, uh, you know, I would. <laughs> that movie is like perfect is the thing. And I think you thought Everything is, is perfect, Devendra. Everything is perfect. That, that movie is fantastic. So you should probably just see that movie. But okay. if you want to go in fresh, the show, yeah. the you know, the Ripley show is a way to do it. Um, I think okay. Jude Law is a better um, Dickie Greenleaf than uh, than the guy in this show. Oh, because I love Jude that. Law is just like beautiful in that movie. Um, yes. But hey, you can't go wrong either way. 
Uh, I also had a recommendation for you, Sherlyn, a song yeah. that I think you'd really appreciate. It's called The Haters Anthem. <laughs> and I think you'd, you'd like it quite a bit. It's by a group called Infinity Song. They are like a New York uh, based, uh, it's like a family group. It's kind of mm. cute, actually. They they make like cute poppy music that does not sound like music you'd expect from today. It's really it's a really catchy song. They have a really fun video shot all around New York uh, that's up on YouTube too. So yeah, go mm. check that out. The Haters Anthem. It is a song about uh, not about not being a hater basically it's it's about the bad things about being a hater but i also feel like charlene could learn a couple of things like yeah i think excuse me you're the hater here <laughs> well that's just gadgets i'm talking oh, about people okay. oh i do hate people this is yeah. true hey um speaking of movies like talented mr ripley that i never got around to watching until yeah. like way after the game um this past weekend i saw and i really enjoyed molly's game uh molly's game's pretty good it was surprising. Like Jessica Chastain was really great in it. I really enjoyed her. Like at first, honestly, okay. To your point about me being a hater, I will admit that like, uh -huh. at the start uh -huh. of this film, uh -huh. I was like so annoyed. She was talking so fast. She was like, "This is me. This is Matt. I'm so smart. I'm so mad." Is this your and first Aaron like... Sorkin written thing? Yeah. I guess like yeah. No, That's well, just like... it, but I mean, I love Aaron Sorkin's work. So like, mm -hmm. I was, but it is his thing to be like a bit like that. Yeah. But this somehow yeah. was a bit more grating. I think it was just this character, uh, at least at the start. But gosh. I sort of got like, I try not to cry in front of people when I'm watching <laughs> like movies with people, although I might have cried uh -huh. in front of death before. Uh -huh. uh, well, it, Avengers, Avengers Endgame. Endgame. Yes, yes. Yes. But so when I was watching Molly's game, I think there was a scene near the end. I won't spoil it, but like, uh, there was a scene near the end that's about family and very like deep seated uh -huh. emotions uh -huh. that really brought me to tears. It was very interesting. Um, the movie's not about that, though. The movie is based on a book called Molly's Game about this uh -huh. person who ran gambling or poker nights a real life uh, story wealthy, famous yeah. people um including one and only toby mcguire apparently was one of the named people in her books uh -huh. um and, and and some other famous people like that uh definitely go watch it i think it was a fun ride i think i saw it on netflix or um anywhere else it's available mm -hmm. for streaming that's yeah, cool. Good time. movie, good rec. That is, I believe, Thank Aaron Sorkin's first movie that he directed. So that I really like that. Uh, he directed another movie called, called The Trial of the Chicago 7, which I think was dreadful. Ooh, so yeah. not, not worth catching up on. All right. Well, I think we'll oh, just I, I cut it there. Ben, yeah, and then you can there. Do Correct. I'll do the outro. Okay. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our former managing editor, Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find me online at, at Devendra on Twitter and Blue Sky and wherever, Mastodon, all those places. Where can we find you, Sherlyn? If you want to follow and see my humane AI pin pictures, you can check out <laughs> my oh, Instagram. Man. I'm at Sherlyn, Instagram, C-H-E-R-L-I-N-N-S-T-A-G-R-A-M, or just uh, anywhere else. Just look for my first and last name, I guess. Hashtag potato phone. Email us at podcast at engadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. And once again, we're trying to do a live stream Thursday mornings around 1030 a.m. Eastern. So join us for that. It's a fun time. Later, folks. Hell yeah. All right. Okay. We can do a little live Three stream. Minutes for chat. Yeah, Yay. we can talk to chat for just a little bit. But yeah. really, thank you everyone for bearing with us. We're trying out all this new technology. It's and going. It's really nice to see feedback from everyone. Yeah. It's really nice to get some lightning in a bottle moment where we were all <laughs> reacting to a surprisingly good poem. Oh god! Hey, Mark. That's uh, definitely you the said, end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark's like, uh, whenever Sherlyn mentions she works out, drink. I'm like, y'all are gonna get super drunks. <laughs> uh, imagine um, like me knowing Sherlyn in real life. So Sherlyn, you were at yeah, your gym worse. like for eight hours yesterday. So all I was hearing was. Oh yeah. Gym, <laughs> all the gym work. Had the show all day. It's all from day. Sherlyn's gym. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing our pre-planning meeting uh, at the gym yesterday too because I didn't leave the gym. I was yesterday was a non-stop writing like show for one me. of those. Um, you lock you locked in as they say. Yeah, I was so locked in. Anyway, um, Declan, Great review, by the way, it. everybody go read Charlene's review with the the AI pin. Yeah, it's a it's a magnum opus. It feels like almost um, it's weird. Declan said, did V's phone take a real photo of the eclipse or did it just auto-generate an eclipse photo like it does with the moon? It probably did <laughs> auto-generate one. It's, it's Samsung. <laughs> it patched in the like ring. Uh, and Rob Lang Lee said, no NIFNAF news, which I don't really know what that's referring to. Rob, let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for being back. We are so glad you all are back. I really honestly didn't know what to expect. I was like, I don't know if y'all are going to 
be we, i didn't even know if mark dell would be able to show up you know what i mean like <laughs> Well, and we were a little late because uh, apparently like YouTube stream keys are like a weird thing and I was given the wrong stream key and blah, 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 blah. But I think we're good. I think we are good Hopefully. with the setup for now. Um, but yes. we would love to have our, you know, video producer Julio back at some point too. Yes. Yeah. And also let that us know because I know that like this is a more bare bones stream where we don't have all of the extra good stuff that like Julio helps us do, which is to put up the like article, the, the, yeah. the visual assets of it. Really. We can share um, websites and YouTube videos, but not during like a recording. That's just tough. It's annoying. Yeah. 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 Um, Mark Dell said he loved your Vision Pro two month recap, by the way. So, cool, cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I also see questions from people saying, Why have we been gone for so, uh, yes. so long? Yoram asks yes. that. Uh, we were gone because we basically lost access to our video producers. We work yeah. for a big company and things shifted. So, the people that used to be in charge of our video were not part of our like group anymore so we just couldn't use them unfortunately yeah. and the since then the organization that also yeah that also happened like in the fall when we were like okay we just got to review all the freaking gadgets and then also okay. we got to do ces and also so no hey more gadgets time. coming out here's a vision pro so i didn't have time to like really think about how we do this live stream but now we are using video ninja which is a really cool web-based service for doing multiple uh, video feeds and uh, um spitting it out through OBS so we could do a very basic stream on our own. Um, and maybe we'll eventually use a service like Riverside or something to get it to all the streaming sites. That'd be cool. Let us know if you have any tips on how to use all those services at all. We always welcome that feedback. Yep. I wanted to shout out um, Daniel Diaz, who said hi uh, midway through the show. And yeah, I think this is time to do a roll call. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, we really appreciate seeing all of you. Uh, if you drop a goodbye now and I see your name, we can say goodbye to you in real time, which is what we're here for. But <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Goodbye. Yoram yeah. Mukumbachoto, Mark Dell, Rob Langley, Gonzalo Costa. I know Jimmy John was here earlier in the morning. Paradise. Rob, Declan, Imel, Tur Turbine with a one. Um, <laughs> we had Danny Wingjet. Wingjet? Wingjet join us earlier sure. today. Football mm -hmm. day. DCO actual kept talking. Sorry, go on, Devendra. No, no, no. I don't know. Quinn Thompson, Roarta. I see. I see a lot of yes. people. I see a lot of different. Okay, names. blah. Cool. Okay, blah. Uh, Razor line. There's new people too. Authex. Just oh wow. <laughs> the so engagement official account. Yes. Yes. Also the engagement official account. Some guy that was, named that was just Alaska. Ugh. <laughs> We will, we will definitely, uh, we have to go through Chris's computer to see what was doing the noise compression for yes. him. Like it's software. I mean, we could all total <laughs> software. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get it. Simon B, do name Charlie. Okay. We got to make cut it there. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us again. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you folks. everyone for joining. I don't even have to do very many credits this time because We're the good. video is brought to There's you FUBU, of kind of for us, by us, yeah. well, for you, by us, F U be you for you <laughs> by us uh it's really all davindra i help out a little yes. bit sherlyn helps yes. out a little bit and thanks to julio for pinch hitting like he yes thank you. yes, yes. actually thing. thank yeah. you to julio barrientos for making this happen still we're yep. still thanking him even though he's not working with us full time and we'll see you next week <laughs> Uh, uh, he's part of our org we're just not a whole thing where's your yahoo yes, full time yes. Just not yes. we'll be back next week right. folks for another Whatever. stream yes, yeah. thank you. if you want to hear about more streams by the way uh, podcastandgadget.com if you want to maybe we'll do bonus episodes maybe we'll do Q&A's let us know later folks thanks for joining us bye <laughs>